Sisters in Christ, mm. Proverbs, I believe it is somewhere in the, the Bible here. Um, welcome to the fastest 30 minutes in broadcast where uh, y'all know uh, Prophet Johnson, that's me. Proverbs chapter number 29, and we're not going to stay here, y'all. I'm just bumping around, really to tell you the truth. Proverbs 29 and um, verse, I just want to read it to you right quick. And, uh, <clears throat> Proverbs 29 and in verse number 4. The king by judgment established the land, living with love in me. What's happening right now? The king by judgment rule it the land. Proverbs 29 and 4. The king by judgment established the land. So, where is Joseph now? He's in the king's manship position. The king by judgment established. So what is given over to him? Judgment. But he that receiving gifts overthrow it. it. The ones that you think that you are there to bless the ones that you give the gift. What do they do? They overthrow it. Take the kindness for weakness. For granted. Okay. Look at this. I'm going somewhere with this. I'm showing you this. Look at what's happening in Israel. Again. Now I've told y'all just recently here. Um, that's just a brother on brother situation that's a black on black crime that's no different from the black people killing the black people over here and jealous of one another you know crabs in a bucket that's that's no different than you know the it, it, except it's on a higher scale it's an inside job it's an inside hit I'm going to show you why we're dealing with this we'll get back to Genesis in a little bit he that being, verse number one, Proverbs 29, he that being often reproved hardens his neck. The ones that you often suppress or correct or chastise it, what do they do? They harden themselves, shall suddenly be destroyed. And that without remedy. There's no cure for it. You can't help folks that you cannot correct. When the righteous are in authority, look at this, Proverbs 29 and 2. When the righteous are in authority, what is Joseph? A God-fearing, righteous man. What leaders do we have on earth right now? Are they righteous men or are they voted men? He that is a voted man. No, we voted him. I mean, come on now, y'all. Each and every one of us know that. So we put them in power and in position to wield, watch this, the will of Satan allowed by God's will. So you can sit back and you can be shaken. And the Bible said, be not soon shaken because in the end there will be wars and rumors of wars. That's been going on for thousands of years way back here. Way back in the Bible. 
So this is nothing new what's happening to Israel. I told you there's only one thing you have to watch out for in Israel, an outside force or the nuclear bomb. When the nations release their god, if any nation release one of their gods, okay, because the nuclear bomb is the god of the earth, the nuclear bomb controlled by Satan in his cohorts operate in the forces and in the time that be, okay? This is why they can go and fight, 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 fight. But don't let another bullet jump in because Big Brother got to jump in. And so here we go again. Make it, you know, all the money, um, MI, the industrial complexes and all those and building and selling and, and the process goes on. Why would all this happen within a short amount of time of um, everything being just hunky-dory? You know, we got the ball games going on. We got, you know, the atmosphere, the sun is getting away and all the heat is leaving. The cool weather is coming back in. You can feel the seasons changing. And, you know, Santa Claus is coming to town and, and, and Thanksgiving is right around the corner and we're busting Halloween open with the ghosts and the goblins and all of a sudden an invasion and whatever they call that thing, an incursion. Come on, people. Let me show you this and we got to hurry. Um, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear it rule, the people mourn. Now, there's no debate about this. We're not, I, I wish I could talk to y'all about the, the uh, politician uh, nine, spirit ticks eight, uh, with what's happening in the, the government, all that stuff, which is a bunch of goop, okay? It's a bunch of goop. They say to you a constant lie. No man is above the law. Lie. Straight lie. Okay? That's the lie that the liars are feeding y'all. <laughs> People are really li living solemn green and don't know it. They really are living solemn green and don't even know it. Why don't you go Google and watch that old 73 show or something? Okay, now look at this, uh, and, and, and I don't, I want to look at verse number four. The king by judgment established the land, but he that received gifts overthrow it. Why did you skip verse number three? Because this is something that's throwing a wigger jig in there. Whosoever loveth wisdom rejoiceth his father. What? Whosoever goes to school, learn education, children that go to college, um, engineers, doctors, psychologists, um, landscapers, uh, ar architects, and um, builders, you know what I mean, construction workers. What do they do? Love it wisdom. Whoso love it wisdom, anyone that searches it out, rejoice it his father. Not only the Father on earth, but the Father that is in heaven, saying, thank God, look at my son. And God is saying, look at my uh, child on earth. So look at what's happening. But he that keepeth company with harlots spendeth his substance. Now, <coughs> excuse me. The first thing you think of when you think of he that keepeth company with harlots are the ones that are going out and rendezvous and getting the little lady walking down the street in the red dress. No, the harlots, okay, spended his substance. It, you know, the Bible is so good with this stuff, you know. And uh, it, it, he that keep, but he that keep it company with harlot spends his substance. And your harlots or anyone that you are feeding substance to, 
You know what I mean? That's where your resources are being taken. And, and, and you say, well, I, I got a, a friends and buddies. And you're spending company with a whole bunch of harlots, you know. In other words, they're pimping you. And I'm being nice, you know this. Y'all know I'm being nice. And, and they're just, you're just spreading your love around in a false manner. I'm going somewhere with this. There's a reason why I'm stopping here before I get to Genesis. We're going back to Genesis, but there's a reason why. Now, I'm not going to read all of this, but I'm showing you this for a reason. Here it comes. Um, a man, verse number 5, Proverbs chapter number 29. And I'm going to get to my key verse, and we're going to move on. A man that flattered his neighbor spread a net for his feet. Do you all see that? In other words, God is saying you can go around and try to impress your neighbors all you want. What is Joseph doing? Joseph is living with loving him. The man that goes around and try to <laughs> impress his neighbor, <laughs> spreading the net for his feet. And so your neighbor is really looking at you like you're a fool, really. You know, you're going to get caught in your own net. All that you bragging about, you know, look at my house, look at my yard, look at my car. And you're spreading a net for your feet. Next thing you know, you got folks coming to your house, give me this, give me that. I want this, I want that. You don't spread a net for your feet. Do you hear me? So what do they do? They come in and they'll, they'll, they'll ask for your furniture. Oh, because you got money to buy more. And they'll, they'll ask for your pictures. They'll ask, and, 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 and so you're, you're spreading your feet. So what is Joseph doing? Joseph is making sure of one thing in life. And I'm about to show you right here. Here it comes. Because, you know, be careful. Hear this. Proverbs. Woohoo! Chapter number 29, verse number 16. Here we go. When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases. There's the storm are coming, uh, the sea is raging. Uh, it won't be fire, it won't be rain, it won't be wind, it won't be the same. Fire coming, storm is coming within. <laughs> Here it is. But the righteous shall see their fair fall. See their fall. What? When the wicked are multiplied, transgression increases, but the righteous shall see their fall. Sit back and chill, folks. <coughs> Sit back and chill. Here it comes. Correct thy son, and, sh and he shall give thee rest. Ha, <laughs> ha. You see, now this right here, I don't like the Bible sometimes. I don't like what it, it declares. I don't like what it speaks. I don't like what it say. I don't want to agree with it because I ask God, what is this here? <laughs> you know, what is this? Let me read it again in case y'all missed it. I'm going to show you this. We get into the good part. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. I'm saying, God, how can this be true when I corrected all of them and didn't have no peace and, and had them to give me hell? Only one. And that one that didn't cause no trouble was the laziest child, the sorriest child, the I mean, you lazy. You talking about lazy? You talking about sorry? My God, people, what are y'all? And I'm saying, God, is this true? 
My, my sons got, got spankings all the way up to 17 years old. What? 15 years old. What? No, they didn't pray. Ask Jesus. Ask Ali. <laughs> Ask them all. 17 years old. Could you imagine spanking a 17 years old saying, stand up. Go out there and get me a stick. What are they doing, Prophet Johnson? Sneaking in out the window. Lord, help us all. God, I know your word is true. That's why I got peace now, because I towed that tail up when they were growing up. And now they got to make their own money when I gave them everything. And now they got, and now they saving money. And now they working hard. Now I ain't calling. Now I ain't asking for not, nothing. Now staying in the house to 30, 40 years old. Big sorry, rusty mugs. And now they doing something. Now <laughs> help me, Jesus. Tell it like it is. Tell it. That's what I love doing. Telling the truth about it. Correct thy son, and he shall give thee rest. That's true, Lord. I got rest now. Yea, he shall delight unto thy soul. Well, I love them, and they all know it. Here it is. Joseph, right here. Right here. Verse number 18. Where there is no vision. Watch this. The people perish. You can stop right there. Where there is no vision, the people perish, but he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Joseph got a vision. Joseph is keeping the law. And now what is he doing? Look at what the Bible declares. After Joseph reveals himself to his brothers, Jacob and his family is getting ready to move to Israel. Verse number 23, Genesis 45. And to his father he sent after this manner, ten asses laden with the good things of Egypt and ten asses laden with the corn and the bread and the meat for his father by the way. In other words, he sent him a caravan. Go take care of my dad and bring him here. He's got a vision. He's living with loving who God have created him to be. No more criticizing, no more killing, no more destroying. So he sent his brother away. Verse number 24, Genesis 45, and they departed, and he said unto them, see that you fall not out by the way. In other words, don't be tripping. Don't be going to no pubs. Don't be stopping at no club, brothers. Y'all go straight home, get my daddy, and bring my family and the rest of them here. Why? Where there is no vision. The people perish. They'll perish. I thought I knew what that was. I thought I knew what a vision was. I thought I had visions and dreams, hopes. And when I go back and I look at my life, I see now that I didn't have no vision. I had a survival. You see, everybody else I had a vision for, I could see their vision. I could see what they wanted. I could see what they needed. Only vision I had was for the church to build God's kingdom. Nothing else, nothing else. Never nothing else. Just to build, just to build. In the lead people to Christ, that's it. That's all that was in my mind. Give me the building, give me the work, give me the tent. Give me the people, we'll build it. And everything I touched got prospered. You see. But the vision had another vision. It was to be destroyed by the vision of others. 
where there is no vision, where you don't have an insight personally for yourself. Where you are not your own gains man in life. Where you do not see <coughs> the purpose that is locked in you. Then you see the vision for someone else. You will see the purpose for someone else. But God said, you, all this time you, you saw the vision for, for, for what you hoped to be. But you didn't see the end vision coming in, the division coming in to separate the vision and to kill the provision that I had given you in life. He said your vision was futile because it was infiltrated. He said you had the vision for the city, for the people, for me, for the kingdom. But what about the vision? Did you ever see one for yourself? I said, oh my God. And happy is he that keepeth or findeth the law, keepeth the law. And for the first time in my life, since I've been on this earth, God have given me a vision for me. I said, Lord, I said, this is so pitiful, so sad. I said, why would you wait for so long to let me at least see one thing for me in this life before I die? And the Lord said, you was too busy looking for everybody else in order to see something for yourself. You see, everybody else still got a vision for you. No, you missed that. Everybody else has a vision for you. No, you missed that one. You didn't get that. They got a vision for your money, a, a vision for your life, a, a vision for your future, a, a vision for your body, a, a vision uh, for everything uh, that serves <laughs> their purpose. But you don't see it because you're too busy answering their vision. Yep. All you want is food, shelter, clothing, the basic essential, right? Don't forget, if a man don't work, he don't eat. Joseph got a vision. Verse number 25, and they went out. They went up out of Egypt and came into the land of Canaan unto their, to Jacob their father and told him, saying, Joseph is yet alive. What? And he is governor over all the land of Egypt. Mm -hmm. And Jacob's heart fainted, for he believed them not. Could you imagine Jacob? Looking up at his son and saying, I don't know what y'all been drinking. And I don't know where y'all been. But forgive me, Lord. But what the hell y'all talking about, boys? Telling me about Joseph? Out of all these years that I've suffered and believed the lie that you told me. That my son is dead. And God is saying again. That there's some things inside of you. That seem to be dead. Your birth may be dead. Your child may be dead. But there's something inside. That's saying you shall live and not die. And proclaim the goodness of the Lord. Why? Why? Because it's coming home now. 
the reality, the vision is coming together. Whom the Son has set free is free indeed. Some of you think that you can be free only by your money. Your money is freedom. Your money answers all things. But what good is your money to set you free if it is subjected to the chains of horrors that hold you in life? Your money frees you to be free. Y'all miss that? See, the enemy will take your money to free them. Y'all miss that one. He going to use your money to go and free your demons. The demons that's operating in family, in children, in structures that come up and bring friction and never a credit, always a debit. You end up with a deficit, a decrease, not an increase, because you're feeding a flock of devils that are designed to stop your vision. You can work for 15, 20 years and you can hustle and save that money. And you can have one devil to come in through a family member to tell you one lie about a dire emergency and you can bust half of that account and feed that demon and that demon will take them resources and you'll never hear from it again. Remember, Satan is also that prince of the power of the air. It is no marvel, for Satan is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore, it be no great thing if his ministers be transformed into the ministers of righteousness whose end shall be according to their works. See, the enemy will lie to give you a flip-flop any time. My brothers and sisters in Christ, remember what I have told you. The knowledge and the word that you are getting are divinely orchestrated, divinely spoken, fearfully and wonderfully graphed and rheumatized into the vocals of a species of a colored being on earth. You will never ever for the rest of your life Get this nowhere else or ever again. And when it is gone, you best believe me, the world is going to wish that they had the prophets of God. They have killed the prophets. I know what the Bible means all the day long. Very rare. Y'all on your own, really. On, I know that the pastor's anointed. I know you shouted. I know you cried. I know you broke down mentally and emotionally. That's a part of your African heritage. You understand? That's a part of your emotions. No, that's your tribe. Because if you got to go to church to get delivered, you don't need deliverance. <laughs> You've been fooled. You think you got to go into a high-powered service to get delivered? Wrong answer. You've been duped again. Emotions feelings, 
demonstration crowd is what's moving you. Your real deliverance come when you by yourself. <laughs> yeah. I love you, Christians. I'm going to tell you the truth. You're not going to buy me. The Bible says buy the truth and sell it. Not, I don't need nothing from you. No great swelling words. No money. Don't really even need your prayers. Because the prayers of a righteous man avail it much. People say pray for me. For what? Who's praying for you? Is it the righteous? Start to finish in closing. In closing. And they told him Joseph be yet alive. He's the governor. And they told him all the words of Joseph. Which he had said unto them. And when he saw the wagons which Joseph had sent to carry him, the spirit of Jacob their father revived. And Israel said, it is enough. We'll pick it up tomorrow. Joseph, my son, is yet alive. I will go and see him before. That's my time. Pick it up tomorrow night. Living with. Loving me. Y'all have a good night. Bye. Go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills in everywhere. Yeah, we finished.